The State Department also calling these charges absurd, using the same language as the Washington Post editor, Marty Barron. This has gone on, as you mentioned, for nine months. It is an outrage to so many in the journalism industry because it's an example of the criminalization of journalism that we see all around the world. This case, though, is especially troubling because Jason has been a famed Washington Post correspondent, the Tehran bureau chief, for years. That's why Anthony Bourdain sought him out uh, when Anthony Bourdain went to Iran uh, to do a piece here for CNN. Uh, Jason's the kind of guy you'd want to talk to, and he would be covering all of the news about Iran lately, the nuclear talks and all the rest, if he were not behind bars. Now, he's a dual citizen, uh, American and Iranian. Some people have speculated that made it easier for the government uh, in Iran uh, to put him in jail. But these charges, these charges of espionage, there's absolutely no proof for them. And as you mentioned, it took months to even hear what the charges were. That's what makes it all the more outrageous. Was, was there anything in his quote about the love-hate relationship with Iran that, that might have gotten him into trouble, some although I can't have, imagine what that well, would be. Some people have speculated about that. At the same time, you know, he's talking about the love as well. He's talking just the same way a reporter would talk, uh, at, you know, pretty pretty much wherever you report in the world, wherever you're a foreign correspondent. You know, I've been staying in touch uh, with his brother, Ali, uh, who said they were hopeful that when this nuclear deal was struck uh, earlier uh, earlier in the, in the springtime here, that maybe that would mean the U.S. would be able to put more pressure on the Iranians now.